Lord has made, we will rejoice and be exceedingly glad. And bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. This time, I'm going to ask her to run up here as a whole next election. Sin, but Jesus took me in, and never the light from heaven filled my soul. You made my heart in love and wrote my name above, and just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. Never let us have a little talk with Jesus.
You've blessed us and spread us so wide, God, that we are still alive here in Guilfield Baptist in Petersburg. While we assemble virtually all across the length and breadth of this commonwealth and even beyond its environs, we can't help but say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for growing us. Thank you for allowing us to be a teaching agent, an inspirational agent, an abiding agent, a partnership agent. That for the many years you have blessed us, we have impacted lives, churches, and communities. So God, we come tonight just to worship you, to adore you for all of your marvelous acts. We continue to ask you to bless this divine leadership of the Bethany Baptist Association in Southside, Virginia its moderators, its auxiliary leaders, its behind-the-scene leaders. Prop them up on every leading side as they lead us into reimagining for this 21st century. God, as we come before you, we lay down our shortcomings because we know it is in the midst of them that you still work your miraculous works through finite lives. God, be with this preacher tonight who will preach a word of inspiration, encouragement, and challengement to each one of us. God, continue to surround us with your Holy Spirit, which empowers us to do the great things that we have done in your name, the great things we will do in your name, and the great things we expect to do in the future. So guide us now, direct us, and Allow your spirit to set our hearts on fire. We'll be careful to give you all the praise, all the credit, all the glory. For it is in your name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. We greet you back this evening to our evening service. Um, at this time, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Mark to give us another selection.
intercessor, a pastor, a preacher, or what have you, or even a, pro a, a proclaimer, I began to prepare myself for what they call church growth. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, my brother Ross Gordon was teaching at Union Branch at the time, the Bible studies, and he was going through a book entitled uh, 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 How to Dissect a Dead Church. Uh, and as he began to go through this particular book, he sent the book to me because he said that Reese, there's something inside of this book that's going to be helpful to you. As I began to read the pages of the book, I began to see those that have been stuck in yesteryear. Uh -huh. I began to, to read the book and they began to talk about the heroes of days past. Uh -huh. and, and then they began to highlight the point that really blessed my soul about the Great Commission, uh -huh. which is simply go into the world and preach and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. And then after that, I'm, I'm here, I'm, I'm, I'm going, uh, I'm at Virginia Union at the time, and I find myself matriculating through the education process there. And, uh, and something happened. Wow. Amen. I found myself in Israel in February 26. And, uh, and, and I received an email from a friend saying, you need to get home because there's something serious that's happening here in America. Uh, I get home and, uh, and I, I'm, I'm not home two weeks in the entire world as I knew it was shut down. And so I'm challenged because I, 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 I know that I'm called to preach. I know that I'm called to teach. I know that I'm ready to do the work that God has called me to do. And I'm preparing myself to build and to help to erect this church that I perceive that God has called me to do. And I, I realized something, family, if I could be honest. Can I tell you the truth? Uh, 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 I realized that, that it was a lot more of me trying to do God's work Come on. And, and not really God attempting to do his work. And so I, I know I won't get many amens right there because uh, uh, a lot of times
working. Uh, this is this is interesting because uh, some of us need to dissect our ego. Mm, we need to dissect our ego, and this text really reminds us that if we attempt to erect something without the presence of God, ah. we're wasting our time. Uh, I, I, I gotta go back a little bit real quick because I didn't do the exegetical part that y'all are looking for here. So let me let me back up here. <laughs> this this text right here is a sermonic uh, a psalm that that simply speaks of the ascension. Uh, this ascension that happened uh, was during the period of time when three times a year that they would ascend to the tabernacle or to Jerusalem to begin to celebrate Jesus or God for all that he had done. Uh, that he had done during Passover when he put the blood on the doorpost, when, when he came through civil walks or what we know as Pentecost, when he sent his spirit through the semantics of the word of God and then uh, uh, the, 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 the point here is, is, and then the last point here is when, when he allowed them to be in the middle of the in the middle of the desert and, and allow them to have provision. And as I begin to think to myself and as I begin to uh, say to myself, Lord Jesus, what would you have me to say in this moment when I feel so nervous and so un uh, unconnected with the moment? He simply said to me, Reese, take the time to remind my people to let me build it. Wow, 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 family, should we allow God to build it? We, we should allow God to build it because it's not about you, it's not about me, but it's about God getting the glory out of our lives. But that's not all, family. Uh, when we allow God to be the benefactor of, of his glory, we are also able to experience the power of God by putting God in the first place. When was the last time that you realized that uh, instead of you doing something, that it was God that did? When, when was the last time that you opened your mouth and realized that it was God that delivered? It was God that made a way. It was God that delivered the word. It was God that allowed somebody to receive a miracle. It was God that cleaned somebody up from drugs. It was God that turned that situation around. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Mm. Family, when we remind ourselves that it's not about us, but it's God, we are reminded that we are placing God in the first place, in the position of kingship, of lordship, of mastery. And even as we're looking at this ascension song, that's simply what he's saying, that I'm in charge. But that's not all. <laughs> that's not all, family. Solomon begins to underscore for us, the believer, that anything apart from the hand of God will not work and ultimately will come to failure. So their labor was in vain that built it. Why? Because it was them that was building it and not God. Can I tell you something, family? One of the things that we have to... Uh, if we're going to be able to reclaim this new generation, they have to see Jesus in us more than they see us in the church. Yeah. I'm reminded this week there's a pastor in Brooklyn, New York, or Bronx, New York, who was robbed. Uh, he was wearing uh, uh, Louis Vuitton and gold chains, and 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 the, and, and the report came that they robbed him of four hundred. And while people were able to see him, I wonder how many people were actually able to see Jesus. Come on. That's good. That's good. That's good. Working good, sir. Working good. This is frustrating, family. Because sometimes we want to have it be said that I preached the best message. I did the best work. I 
Praise the biggest offering. I've done this. I've done that. But God said simply, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. We, we, we realize uh, in that text that he's not talking about being elevated. Come on, come on, come on. But he's simply talking about his crucifixion and his death. And every day of our lives required that we go before the Lord and crucify our flesh, yes. crucify our thinking, yes. crucify our understanding, crucify everything that doesn't line up with the word of God. Teach, God. Teach, teach, teach. Mm. Crucify. Mm. And so the question that we really need to ask tonight and even the question that they ask even in this text as we go further because as we are asking the question who's going to secure the schools who's going to secure the banking systems who's going to secure our families there's one person that we've missed out on asking the question to when was the last time somebody said that we need Jesus? Now understand, family, I understand in the world in which we live in, everybody is focusing on their own agenda so that they can begin to arrive at a point where they can get the glory, get the opportunity to be able to celebrate the fact that God has done something good in their lives. But if the truth be told, it is not about us. It's about Jesus. And so I close here, family, uh, not with a hoop, not with a holla, and, and not definitely not in the way that most people would have perceived that I would leave or even start this sermon. But I just simply want to ask each and every one of us that are under the sound of my voice to do this one thing. For, for, for one second, if we could, let us commit ourselves to surrendering back to God. Amen. Amen. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, if, if we could, if we could surrender back to God, then, then, then we don't have to worry about if the people are going to come back uh, because of COVID-19. We don't have to worry about coming in contact with monkeypox. We don't have to worry about if somebody's going to come and shoot up the school or shoot up the church because we understand that when it's God's job to protect his house. And so my word simply to you is let God build it. Let God build your family. Let God build your finances. Let God build your future. Because everything that we attempt to build without Jesus in the center falls and becomes nothing. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you right now for your word, and I thank you even more so for your promise. I ask now, Father God, that you have anointed your people afresh, a, a Father God, that they will experience you in ways that will allow you to know that you're real. Lord, even as we have plans and have structured and strategic plans, Father God, I pray right now that we would give those things back to you. That we will be able to see and experience your power in real and excellent ways. That we'll be able to say, Lord, it wasn't that I did something that was great. But Father God, we'll be able to echo that it was you that had worked this thing out all the time. Lord, we want you to get the glory out of our lives. Lord, we want you to be able to get the praise and, and get the opportunity to say it was nobody but Jesus Christ that did this. And so, Lord Jesus, tonight our prayer for those that are under the sound of my voice, Father God, is, Lord, that you would allow us to surrender back to you. To surrender back to your plan, Father God. And that we will be able to experience your joy like never before. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
truth of the matter is, most of our churches are not running over with people anymore. Most of our people are visiting through social media. It's time that we began to allow God to rebuild the church. Because with God, we build He starts with the foundation. Reminds me of the story of three little pigs, but there's only one who had a firm foundation. And that foundation today for us as people of God is Jesus the Christ. The one who suffered, bled, and died on Calvary's cross. The one who got up with all power in his hand. So maybe this evening, maybe you're watching through social media, Zoom, or Facebook, or maybe we here, and we don't know it for yourself. We offer Christ to you tonight. Every head bow, every eye close as you begin to examine yourself. As Dr. Reese is saying, allow God to build it. Because when God builds it, Man can't tear it down. When God builds it, you can stand firm on the firm foundation. David said, "He'll be a shelter in the time of storm." Have I got a witness in here? We offer Christ to you. does your mind have to do? The Lord 
You read your scriptures very carefully. I read the Bible once or twice. <laughs> very seldom does God's Son ask for our hearts. But Christ asks for our minds. When you look at the miracles and the teachings of Jesus Christ, it's about liberation, but liberation only comes through the mind. Can you shout that back at me? Mind. And anytime someone comes to Jesus, I'm sure the importance of mental health and the season we're in that God wants our mind. Every person that comes to Jesus looking and searching for a miracle, he asks them two questions. Of the very same two questions, if you go to a therapist, Jesus asked the question, what brings you here to this point? The second question Jesus raised, not only what brings you here, but how can I assist you to get to where you need to go? Are you walking with me? And so tomorrow we have two practitioners in health and mental health on tomorrow. And I solicit um, your prayers. I, 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 I shared with a friend of mine, I'm not going to mention his name, years ago we had a conversation. He, he penned a sermon about the man dwelling among the tomb. And he makes the suggestion could the church in current times be in a schizophrenic state where we are hurting ourselves because we don't want our minds transformed. And so tonight, we thank you again. Also, we have some salads. I believe it's outside the door. Um, moderate lines, we're right outside the doors. And on tomorrow, we are giving away, not giving away, we're offering vaccines for COVID. And so if you know someone who needs a vaccine, uh, please send them this way. And this time again, we thank you. Can you do me a favor and say, touch yourself, say, self, self. be encouraged. Be if it was full, I'll tell you, turn to a love person. Touch yourself one more time and say, self, self. Love, yourself. love yourself. At this time, I'm going to ask moderator Tucker to come and give us the benediction at this time. Oh, yeah, offering. I forgot that. An offering, what we're going to do as you exit through the doors, maybe someone by the doors to take the offering. Amen. I almost got in trouble. I forgot I'm in a Baptist church.